Imagine sitting in a slowly darkening room, reading by the light of a small oil lamp burning on the table next to you. The letter you're reading is from a friend written three weeks ago and delivered this morning from a mail locomotive. The water wheel in town powers a factory where you work. Did you ever think about what it took to replace those systems of lighting, manufacturing, and communication with what we have today? The key was to understand and control electrical energy, especially the kind that seemed to flow both forward and backwards. This changed everything. The generation of this kind of power was accomplished with electric generators, transmission lines, and electric motors were used to convert this electrical energy to work. The question is, then, how does this electric generator or motor work? If they could understand that, then they could design better ones, fix ones that did not work, and build other things to use this electricity. In the late 1800s, these questions left scientists, engineers, and inventors alike baffled. It seemed no one could explain these phenomena. However, the answer to all of these questions and more resided in the great mind of one small German immigrant, Charles Proteus Steinmetz. In the years to come, Steinmetz would develop a powerful mathematical tool still used today, a technique he called the symbolic method, but one which we simply refer to today as phasers. Now, you're going to learn how phasers came to be. So arm the photon torpedoes and set your phaser to stun. Oh no, not that kind of phaser. Charles Proteus Steinmetz, born in Germany, immigrated to the United States in 1889 to avoid persecution for his political views. As a GE employee, with short stature and severely curved spine, he began exploring ways to analyze AC circuits. This circuit diagram is a very simple example of the types of AC electric systems that scientists and engineers tried to analyze by hand. Using the mathematical tools of the day, finding the output voltage of this circuit was difficult. Using differential equations, many steps were required to find a final answer. Many, many steps. But it was Steinmetz who realized that there is an easier way. In his 1893 paper, he explains how to simplify sinusoidal functions for the purpose of analysis. To distinguish the horizontal and vertical components of sine waves, we may mark, for instance, the vertical component with a distinguishing index, as a letter J, and thus represent the sine wave by the expression I equals A plus BJ, which now has the meaning that A is the horizontal and B is the vertical component of the sine wave I, and that both components are to be combined in a resultant wave of intensity square root of the quantity A squared plus B squared, and the phase angle equal to the arctangent of B over A. This notation, to become the phasor notation, eliminates the need to express time in the equations. Phasors have become so useful that today, engineers in the power industry almost take them for granted. Phasors are really like fundamental arithmetic for use in power systems. So they allow us to do fundamental analysis on the power system and phasors are so ingrained in our work, we don't think about them deeply very much. It's like when you add two numbers, you don't think deeply about the the fundamental properties of numbers and the fundamental properties of addition, you just use them and that's the way it is in power systems. Here we start with the same circuit and analyze it using phasers. As you can see, solving the circuit analysis without phasers is taking much longer. The electrical engineering department at Union College was founded by this remarkable and generous man. Charles Steinmetz. When Steinmetz first came to Union College, there wasn't any electrical engineering department and no real electrical engineering classes. There was some interest in electricity and magnetism in the physics department, and so he started teaching some courses there on electrical theory. As his association with the college deepened, he eventually founded the electrical engineering department here and brought in other experts to help him develop the first electrical engineering program at a liberal arts college, as far as we know, in the country. The world would be a darker place without the infrastructure that was built using this understanding of phasers.